Looking for an affordable rapid trigger keyboard that doesn't compromise on performance? Today we're unboxing and reviewing the Aegis AK820HE, a budget-friendly option that might just surprise you. But does it live to the hype? Let's find out. Today we're exploring one of the most affordable rapid trigger keyboards on the market, the Aegis AK820HE. It's a bit of a mouthful, but the real question is, does it perform well? Well, the answer is both yes and no. Let's dive into the details. We'll start with the unboxing. Inside of the box you'll find the keyboard itself. I have the grey and yellow colorway which looks surprisingly good for this price point. The yellow accents remind me a bit of cyberpunk aesthetics, adding a nice splash of color to the keyboard. Overall I really like the look of it. It's a 75% layout with a dedicated knob in the top right corner offering a compact yet functional design. Apart from the keyboard you will also find a simple non-braided USB-C cable to connect it to your PC as well as a keycap and key switch puller handy tools for any future customization. The keyboard's outer shell is made of plastic which is expected for a budget oriented product. However the key plate is made of aluminium giving it a more premium feel and sound. This also adds to the overall weight with the keyboard weighing in at 860 grams. The stabilizers are pre-looped and plate mounted and the RGB lighting is south facing minimizing glare. Impressively the keyboard is gasket mounted and features a generous amount of sound dampening materials, poron foam, EVA foam and a silicone case pad. It also supports an 8000Hz polling rate and all the tests you'll see in the video were conducted using this setting. The keycaps are double shot PBT with non-transparent legends. The backlight is bright and positioned in a way that doesn't glare into your eyes. One peculiar aspect is the position of the USB port. It's on the right side, usually USB ports are on the left, which is the preferred placement if you're using a coiled cable. It's a minor inconvenience but worth mentioning. Even though the description mentions that the key switches are pre-looped at the factory, I find they're a tad scratchy when typing. However, at this price point is acceptable and they still feel much better than some of the big brand competitors. I'm looking at you, Razer and Stickle Series. While we read it, let's do a quick sound test so you can judge for yourself. I really like the sound profile of the keyboard. Sure, it's not perfect and could use a bit of tuning and tweaking, but remember, this is a sub $70 keyboard, tax included. And for that price, some compromises have to be made. Now, speaking of compromises, let's move on to performance because there are none here. The keyboard boasts an impressive 24.1 millisecond response time, which puts it really close to the Wooting 60HE and just marginally slower than the Wooting 80HE. And let's be honest, a 4 millisecond difference isn't noticeable in real world use anyway. If you're wondering how I measure this, I use my standard method, a Sony RX107 camera with a 1000 FPS recording rate paired with an MSI 4K 240Hz OLED screen displaying Overwatch 2. I measure the time between button release and the effect on screen. This method allows for pretty accurate measurements and to even out any anomalies, I perform at least 10 runs of each keyboard tested. Now let's talk about accuracy and here's where things get a bit tricky. The keyboard suffers from similar issues that plague other budget keyboards. It's not tuned perfectly. When I set the rapid trigger to 0.1 millimeter, the keyboard starts to act up, throwing random activations and deactivations. I believe this is due to poor calibration. I even run the calibration process in the app, but it didn't help. I think a firmware update could potentially solve this issue. However, there's a simple workaround. All you need to do is use a higher rapid trigger sensitivity. Setting it to 0.2 mm or even better 0.3 mm completely solves the problem. In reality, the rapid trigger activates at around 
0.2 mm when you're set it to 0.3 mm, which supports my theory of poor calibration. Considering that many budget keyboards face this issue, I'll leave it up to you to decide whether it's a deal breaker or not. Moving on to software, it's pretty standard. It looks like a reskin of the programs other budget keyboard brands use. While it functions and gets the job done, the visual design and user experience leave a lot to be desired. On the plus side, you get plenty of customization options like remapping keys, controlling RGB effects, setting dynamic keystrokes and of course adjusting the actuation point and rapid trigger settings. However, there's a weird quirk. The software seems to forget your settings each time you close it and resets to the default presets. It's a bit annoying to be honest. So is the AGES AK820HE worth your money and attention? Well, apart from the typical miscalibration of the magnetic switches resulting in poor accuracy at low level rapid trigger settings, it's pretty decent. The build quality is good for the price and the performance, arguably the most important aspect, is impressive. If you're looking for a budget-friendly option and can live with rapid trigger setting around 0.3mm, I think it's a solid choice. Thanks for joining me in this review of the Aegis AK820HE. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more tech reviews. If you have any questions or want to share your own experiences with this keyboard, drop a comment below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.